Good morning to a glorious day 288. Okay, today is meant to be the pour. So the concrete boys are out there again, as they were Monday. Hopefully they'll get to do some work today. Um, George, how are you? Are you shit the bed? The plumber's in the house, look. <laughs> 10 to 8. He's either had a rut when the missus has been kicked out, or... <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, no worries, they'll come up in a second. Yeah, because it smells as well. Anyway, that's why I'm going to live. Cup of tea, by the way. Walls were built on tea. Nobody should drink tea. You don't drink tea, do you, Smithy? You don't drink tea, do you? No one drinks tea. Very strange. Orange drinking pineapple juice. Um, so we've got, well, one thing we have got to do is we've actually got to get the four by twos put up, sorry, two by fours here, where we said we were going to put them last night. So I don't know what happened, but we were going to be putting them across there, across there and across there to try and hold up the element towards the house. Um, but I came out last night at half four and everyone was getting the car shooting off. So something we're going to have to get sorted now. So not ideal, but we'll get it done. Smithy's taking the scaffolding down to get it over into the corner again. Then we can go and get some two by fours out from underneath. Ideally, they need to be around about minimum six foot, six to 10 foot ideally. So we need six of those. And then we can attach them into the eight by threes into the wall. And then underneath that, obviously put a two by four into the wall um, and prop it up like these ones here have done. But obviously they'll be going either side of the eight by threes. So there's a lot of weight going into that corner. And as a few of you have spotted already, um, the steel isn't going into the wall a great deal and they're certainly not hooked enough that's for sure but anyway um the plumber is here on day of pour um there's a couple of um above the actual bathroom there's a breather ho uh, a breather pipe for the toilet um and a breather pipe for is it a breather pipe for the toilet it might just be the sink no, but either way obviously they ha you have to have a breather for the toilet and the sink um, to let the gases away and at the moment that's come out the roof there so I think he was talking about potentially rooting it somewhere else wherever it's going to be I don't want to see it so a lot of people root them out to the side of the house and have a vent on the side and I don't want that so I'll talk to him in a minute about where that's going to be put but again you shouldn't really be doing it on the uh, on the hour of the pour um, obviously over here on a separate matter we're going to be taking the boxing off of that tomorrow uh, today sorry um, if you look across the top of the building, the plastering of the parapet is not that good. It really is quite rough all the way along. So I don't really know what to do about that. I mean, we're up there doing it as we speak. So do we, do we sand that? Do we replaster it? I don't know. Either way, I think we're just, we're just going to make it worse if we start playing with it. But obviously, once that box is off, we're going to have to replaster that end anyway. So hopefully, we can try and blend that in to the point where you can't see it. Um, we're only six minutes to eight. Um, but obviously being a day of Paul, you would think that the whole team would be here by now, but I think there's a few people missing. So they tend to come here between five past and ten past. And uh, someone might have asked, how, how do you get on with um, the timesheet and the guys and uh, deducting and adding? It's been fine. Obviously a few people came to me from day one, my, my money's not right. It is right, you get paid for what you do. So um, yeah, from my point of view, that's one thing I think that everybody building on the island needs, needs to do because if guys aren't going to be reliable, um, then they shouldn't be paid the day rate you've agreed. Uh, Shoe on the other foot, if they stay late or work for their lunch, then they should be paid and they don't get paid here. So if they stay an extra half hour, hour, two hours late, I mean, we had a pool one night, the guys were here till um, half nine. Um, they didn't get paid any extra, it was the day rate. So here, now with me, they get paid their hourly rate for extra work. But at the same time, shoe on the other foot, if they're 15 minutes late, then they lose 15 minutes pay. So yeah, um, I've got um, systems in place um, and I've got timesheets as well. So if anybody needs any help with that, then um, you've got my email on the uh, contact us page, just let me know. Um, so yeah, anyway, we're, we're the guys are prepping at the moment as we speak, we're gonna get those two befores up. The concrete lads are already under the tree out there um, having their, uh, probably beer now and there. Joking aside, last time they were here, literally 8.30, you walked past me with their deputy, I was like, <laughs> deputy beer at 8.30 in the morning on a construction site about to pour concrete <laughs> but it works so who am I to who am I to knock it 
Um, so anyway, I'm going to obviously go and see the guys now, see what's going on, um, and I'll check in. Obviously, whilst I'm on here, please, as always, help me get um, subscribers, like and share. Um, anybody that hasn't seen the Instagram page at the moment, please go on there. It's obviously the um, Barbados. You can find it with, under my name, but it's Barbados um, Beach House Build. Um, a lot of the pictures and a lot of the videos from the early days are going on there at the moment. So without having to go through all the videos on YouTube, you can go straight to it, see some pictures, and there's some great, um, great up-to-date videos. I mean, I think last night we were up to day 40, I think. So, um, yeah, day 40 we're, up, we're, we're sort of posting at the moment. So, yeah, get, take a quick look. Um, the Instagram link is, is below in the comments. Um, we'd love to obviously see some of your comments and likes and shares, that's for sure. Um, and I think we're at about 530 some um, subscribers at the moment as well, which is good. So it's going in the right direction. Let's see if we can try and get 600 by the weekend. That'd be bloody great. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll stop babbling and I'll check in at some point later on today. Nine o'clock. I guess he's coming down the road. Is it a pump or concrete? It's the pump. Still putting up two by fours downstairs. Should have been last light. Now we have a concrete truck that's arriving. So, hopefully the boys can get their arse in gear because they've got about another four to park. Normally, when the pump truck turns up, not long after, you know what we have arriving after. So anyway, as you can see, the roof is pretty much done. Um, the uh, breather pipe that was ugly, sticking out the floor here, is now bent around here. It's now shooting that way and we'll come out the side of the building, which is good. Um, we've got enough coverage just here, look. So that's the highest point. I should say that's the highest point. Very close. But anyway has to be done so that is where the smell has been coming from it's been an awful smell too so anyway he's uh, he's now parked up there waiting for the concrete guys to turn up he might even do it from there you never know so the concrete boys will come in reverse up pour into here and his arm will come right up over to here so we're going to try and get the guys that are doing the concrete. Get rid of as of as and when I find bits on the floor. Getting rid. So I'm going to try and get the guys to leave the lines in. Obviously, we'll we'll, we'll probably have to remove those as we go. But at the moment, as you can see, we've got an orange line coming from here all the way through to the corner. Another one here coming that way. Another one here going that way. So. All of this roof is leaning towards that corner. That's the highest point. All the way along here. So this will be eight inches and it'll be eight inches along to about here and then it maybe will come down a little bit and this will be a parapet. Eventually once the roof's done, like the others, we'll put a parapet all the way around. But we'll have it sloping all this way. So if the guys for the lines, then hopefully we should be good, which I'm going to measure now. Okay, so sorry for the uh, the wind. Just get out of the wind very quickly. Okay, so I've checked all the levels. All the levels are exactly where they need to be. So we got pretty much eight and a half inches to sometimes eight and three quarter over here, all the way down. I would say that this is a little bit low because we've got fives down here, but we are going to raise back up again. So we've got to be careful that the steel doesn't get too close to the surface here. Um, I mean, you can see it's a five, but we've still got a good coverage above so you can see where the wood is in fact let me show you so you can see so it's important to physically get three inches of coverage on the steel in this area mainly because of the salt wind and the driving forces that can come around here when the when the weather's bad um, but as you can see here look six inches is the block and you've got two and a quarter inches to the top of the block from the highest steel. Well, I'll say that, there's a couple here now we've added. So we're probably quite close here. 
Um, and again, really, this bit should be removed because what we're going to do is we're going to do a, we're going to do the actual drain element through here. So really, this should be lower. Otherwise, you're going to land up not being able to do the French dra the, the the drain properly. The French dra you're not be able to do the wipeout properly because these are in the way. So really, these should be underneath. But anyway, so we're going to be doing it to here anyway. So we're six inches, so we've got two inches of play above those. So that should be absolutely fine because it'll only be about an inch. Um, and then we'll put a lot of treatment in that. So we'll put a lot of rubberization in there and I'll put some um, fiber into the actual holes themselves and rubberize that in. So that would be a whole rubberized um, gutter that will collect. That's the aim. Um, and here comes Mr. Robotic Arm. So the guys are still installing 4 by 2s and 2 by 4s and all the other shite downstairs as we are waiting for the arm to come across. Still picking up nails and everything off the floor that are going to get buried into our concrete. Just remove two bits of loose steel, a bit of 2 by 4 so it's like we're meant to be finished up here and ready to pour and I'm finding loose bits of steel and big chunks of stuff that shouldn't be up here. Anyway, that's me moaning, as always. So I'm going to leave the guys to it downstairs. I'm not going to get involved in that anymore. I've been downstairs helping them out, but... Nails. Um, from my point of view be happy to get this bloody thing poured and make sure it friggin works this time it bloody better do um, it does it does seem to be sort of bowing slightly but obviously the weight of the concrete is going to push that down anyway as much as the jacks will try and stop it you are going to get some form of movement i don't know how much movement you're going to get um, on a roof this size uh, but you will get some movement obviously it's just things like that there's no point even having it here can't do anything unless it's actually going to be Steel. Really, the smocks are only there just to make sure that as and when the weight bears down. But there's no point having things like this in here. Yeah, it's just it's just to try and help. I mean, as you can see here, look where people have been standing on it now. You're getting this sort of stuff happening, which isn't major, but yeah, it's irrelevant having it there now. It's just. But anyway, so from my point of view, we're pretty much ready to go. There's not a lot can go wrong now that you've actually got everything prepared. Um, so it's just now waiting for the concrete trucks to turn up and hopefully, which you always have a problem in, on the island, hopefully they'll have truck after truck after truck. There's nothing worse than sitting here for, I mean on the roof we had a couple of times where we had 40 to 50 minute gaps in between concrete turning up which means you just have cold joints because the concrete goes off but anyway it's, it's starting to look starting to look ready so all we've got to do now get the concrete team ready so again this is ready mix that are doing the concrete but also at the same time Bartex are the uh, concrete company that are doing the uh, the management and the float um, so I don't know where uh, where the owner is but the guys are under the tree already they've been here since eight o'clock so um, what's the time now quarter past nine but anyway i'll dial in and update you as and when we stop okay so we're quarter to ten sand is going down for the leakage um four trucks are on the route pump's already here set up ready waiting tyson acting like he's Um, so yeah, with the sand goes down, obviously because there's gaps in the ply and the concrete comes through. So uh, that's been overloading the place, but obviously we'll be in here underneath once it's pouring, but be careful, obviously, just making sure that <laughs> the lot doesn't come down on you. So it's laying it down, making sure we can catch as much of the leakage as possible. Bear in mind, this is the finished article. So, um, Drains up through the floor up here. You can see light through here. Look. Anyway, you can see. Hang on, my point. Anyway, you can see light is where the concrete's going to come. So 
yeah, it's just making sure that we've got the sand in the right places. Um, the trucks are on route. So, in the next 10, 20 minutes, we should hear a roar of a quick lorry, ready to feed this monster. And then we should be pouring. So, fingers crossed, everything up there is stable. Where it needs to be in place. The levels are good, check themselves, as you saw. Everyone's checked them, the concrete guy has also checked them in the south east happy, everyone's happy. So it's just now, give us some concrete and let's get pouring. So I'll update you as and when things change. So the first one arrives, 20 to 11. Man, this is about to start. Your man is here. Sorry about the wind. Yeah. That's the first one. So we've got four coming. Probably gonna need a bit more, but we shall see. We shall see. Okay, so we're starting. First pull going on. Okay, so we've got concrete coming through already. Hopefully the guys are going to be down here with spades and sand. So the concrete lorry is loading up. As you can see, they're now starting to pour. Get a spade and just stand under there, and obviously, as when you see stuff come through, put the sand there, yeah? Cheers, and So, what we want to try and do is obviously just keep ahead of the concrete coming through because it's a finished floor. So, as soon as we start seeing concrete coming through, we've got to make sure there's sand there, and what we probably have to do is pile it up. And this is the reason why it splashes, as you can see. So at the moment what we've got is we've got these big beams all the way around. So they're probably going to have to do all the beams first and then come back round. I'm assuming Beckles is up there somewhere. I haven't seen him. Yeah, he's in the back. Or the front, should I say. Showing the guard wall. I think the guard wall is going to get a bit of a spray in. So I wonder if it's worth putting some um, plywood sheets there. Shout out to Ooh and get him to come and help you. Again, we've painted all these walls so rather than covering it in concrete. They should really have some ply sheets up there. As you can see, it's getting concrete on it already.
lot of concrete going in there. Bit of vibrating going on. So obviously these beams are four foot deep by eight inches wide and that goes all around the whole building and the building is roughly 30 by 30 so you've got the best part of 90, 90 foot at four foot deep of concrete and then you've got an inner beam here which is thinner but that beam goes through around about 20 feet as well. So there's quite a lot of beam in there. So I think it's landed up being 31 cubic meters of concrete for a garage roof. garage roofs but to give an example the floor I think was 17 cubic meters so you've got 40, 17 cubic meters there but 31 above those beams really do uh, take the concrete to a different level so at the moment again there's a beam going through from the other side of the bathroom along so what they're doing is they're pouring the beams all the way around first vibrating all the way down. And for those who don't know, the vibration enables the stones to come down and the air to go up. It stops what they call honeycombing. Honeycombing is when the actual, the, you, from the side you see, you see stones. It looks like a honeycomb. Loads of stones, loads of gaps. That's not good. You need as much concrete down the side as possible, so it enables the waterized concrete to come down the side as well. Honeycombing here is not good near the sea, because it enables the salt and the air to get in. and protecting his walls, which is good. So much easier with a pump as well. Although they're not cheap, I mean, they're, I think they're nearly a thousand Bayesian well worth it because otherwise you'd be uh, carting concrete up steps and uh, scaffolding that is not going to be fun so yeah what they're going to be doing at the moment like I said they're going to be taking an eight and a half inch concrete at this side and all of it's going to be running that way so that's going to go down that side that's going to go down that side the corner is going to go to corner and the side's going to go to sides all aiming for that far right hand corner so the lines are all in there we've asked them to leave the lines in and then that way they can use the lines to make sure they get the runs 100% correct. So anyway, I don't want to bore you, I'm going to cut off for now and then I'll update you in a second. Okay, so here's truck number two. Truck number two. The 
third one's already on the road as well, which is good. So at least we know we're going to have three within reason, very close to each other. All looking good so far though. Get a slight lean out on on hit up here, but I think that's how we put it in, not how it's now being pushed. But that does mean that when we pass that, we're going to have to chip that off, which is a pain in the backside. See a lot of it's leaning in over here. This is all leaning in, but then it sort of starts leaning out here. That little piece there. I'm not too sure that's us. I'd say it probably is. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of concrete. Okay. A lot of weight. Two levels of man like a cheesecake he's in the middle of. So he's now going to try and pull it. bloody hard to try and pull the lines obviously like that when there's so much concrete going on because obviously the lines get buried under the concrete so you've got to try and ping them up to make sure that you're uh, on them if not under them for the moment I can't see this line here A little bit heavy, a little bit high here by the looks of it. 
bring that down. They've also got to uncover the, uh, the line at the far side because that's still underneath that concrete there. So we have to pull that out. The beam's the most important to vibrate because obviously it's four foot deep so they've got to try and get all of that concrete going right down to the base. As much vibrating as they can do I would say. Yeah, 
brand new machine. So, yeah, two years. He's just commenting on, he's only just found out and believed I'm actually a carnivore. All he is me. He's only just found out now. He's like, why don't you eat vegetables? I don't eat vegetables. Okay, so we're halfway. Beckles up here keeping an eye, which is good. Sorry about the bad filming, trying to get up scaffold in one-handed. Okay, so here's where the, uh, the little chucks are. There's one over there one here and the guys will remove those before they did the rest but the lines are looking good so there's one of Beckles lines in the far corner there all the way down to here one in the far corner over there come into here this one here unfortunately got broken off I was trying to tell him it's being buried by the time I obviously got tried to pull it up it was too uh, too buried and it snapped but anyway they pulled another one from there look so you can see where it is so this is number three which means we are definitely going to lead at least five. Then again, saying that, there's a lot of beam there, a lot of beam there, and a lot of beam here, and there's only two bits of beam. So he might get away with two. Two and a bit. But we'll see what he says. So, uh... One thing I didn't look at was in there. Beckles. One thing we didn't think about, look in there, look. In that block hole, gone right through to the inner wall look that concrete pulls in there that's going to fly down the inside plasterboard underneath yeah underneath so basically the silver thing you can see just where his hand is that's actually the uh, u-channel on the wall on the other side which means yeah so above that block straight into the plasterboard we should have fixed the foam that Yeah. So I go and get some fixer foam or uh, cement cement bags. Cement bags, yeah. Where's Andy? Andy. Andy. Get some cement bags. Cement bags. Two. Yeah. So basically, if we don't fill that gap above that block and all the way down, there's the concrete pours in. It's just literally going to pour straight inside the house. I mean, you won't see it if you go on the plaster board, but we want to try and stop that. So we'll put um, some cement bags in there and that should stop it, hopefully. Okay, these guys are coming up and preparing, which means they're about to start pouring again. This man's kicking that one out, which is good. Okay, let's get the bags. Okay, half past one. Tasting in the house. Okay, we have a garage roof. Oh, it looks to be running this way. So fingers crossed, we're all good. Okay, so it looks like the line's coming straight through here. The line's coming straight through here. This is definitely sloping to here. And then what we've done with this, we've got a two, three inch and a slight wipe out here. Hopefully this will be okay. I've gone over it myself, so I can take the blanket, it doesn't work. Um, obviously we've got the, uh, the breather going right through now over to the other side. So that's now poking out now, which is good. Although I don't remember what that's for. I'm not too sure what that pipe is for. But anyway, these seem to work apart from here. This one went up and got a bit of splash on it, unfortunately. But other than that, we're pretty good. So obviously the stills are here waiting for the parapet to be put all the way around. So tomorrow we'll start getting the parapet done and then we can start plastering the whole bloody thing and get, uh, get cleaned up. So, uh, and we've also done the front. Uh, there's a bit of a catch-22 there. Do we go higher or lower? We've gone lower, so it's got the run that it needs on it. We've boxed off the first six inches over in the corner over there, so we can actually do the wipeout for the gutter, and uh, we've gone low because of the track that's going to go in there for the gate. So we didn't want to trap any more water in here, so we've gone lower in the hope that no water will get trapped. So fingers crossed it was the right decision. But anyway, I couldn't reach over here to sort this bit out, so but anyway, that'll be covered up with, um, with the parapet anyway. But everything else seems to be... Uh, Seems to look pretty good. So there's a lot of weight on there, so fingers crossed that will all dry and it will all be good. Um, the concrete um, 
is all pretty much underneath until we take this formwork off we will see underneath we'll probably have to sort of make good around there but other than that good job so far so any we're obviously going to go down and clear up and i'll check in a bit later on look at me looking like a tomato Excellent. okay beetroot checking in it's three o'clock most of the guys have shot off um the painter who was not involved is still here uh, one of the masons that wasn't involved is still here one of the laborers so let's have a quick look upstairs we actually did we left it a couple of hours before we start to put some water on it so there's now water uh, yeah so at least we can see that it's running so as you can see we managed to get one right guys we actually got one right so it's come right down to this corner so here's the little drain that we've created so the water is running to here lovely So eventually, once we actually take the formwork off, then we'll connect these two pipes to the two pipes that are actually in here. So there's two here around here. So this will be elbowed, elbowed over this way. That one will be elbowed over that way. And the water will drain straight down onto the road. So that is good. Tomorrow, we'll start taking the formwork off, um, start actually getting the parapet put on. Um, it's actually quite good that that's there because it keeps it, keeps it cool. get off at the moment so it's only downside um, I actually did like a little V parapet as well so when the water comes in it flows to both so um, but yeah that's good at least it's actually flowing we've got one roof right patio wrong I oh, wonder the roof over there's okay the roof the, the cottage roof is fine this roof has got three swimming pools um, the driveway doesn't work and this is a this is the first one um, also get some water spray on there as well in the middle as well sort of half hour 40 minutes but anyway all good so uh i'll take you around in a minute and show you the parapet because we've done the parapet the other side as well so that's been done but i'll check in and show you that okay so just form formalizing here which is good that's good we've also got gray steps so the front's been finished off down the side of the building and these are nice and dark grey. Very dark. Okay, so this is um, this is a floor, concrete floor paint from Harris. So it looks quite nice. So that's been done. And the parapet has been done. So rock is just finishing off the front. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Then we get that painted in and uh, the OCD can stop, which is good. There you go. Brilliant. Okay, other than that, that's going to be it for the day. Um, even though it's only three o'clock, I think the guys have entered it. So I will check in first thing tomorrow. Like and subscribe. Give me some more comments. And I'll upload some more pictures to Instagram later on as well. So if you can all check out that and... Uh, get liking and commenting as well, that'd be great. Thank you.